listening to Give God 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. Good Monday morning, everyone. Thank you so much for letting me uh, share some time with you. (laughs) Once again, I am unsupervised, which means... Nobody's here to keep me on track. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, you know, it when you get used to having somebody to look at and, and give you a little bit of live feedback, uh, it helps. It really does. Because sometimes, you know, let's face it, I, I pick subjects that uh, and topics that are not always easy to talk about and you know, quite honestly with Myra's here I <laughs> I like it a lot better because I can watch her reaction uh, and if she looks confused about something I said you know, a lot of times you'll hear me say did I say that right <laughs> so yeah uh, I'll be glad when she gets back uh, either this afternoon or hopefully this afternoon possibly tomorrow but hopefully this afternoon um, you want to uh, check out givegodnoney.com if you haven't been there lately. Uh, made a couple changes there, so check that out. Uh, don't forget the books are available if you want some summer reading. Or, you know, let's face it, if you have a Bible study, uh, either God's Universe, God's Rules, or Inheriting Lies would be uh, a couple of books that you might want to choose for that. Uh, look them over and see what you think. So, I, I want to um, get into something today that I've alluded to before, but, and we've talked about some of these things before, but we're going to dig just a little bit, and you might be surprised at what you hear. Um, I wish I could say I was, but Quite honestly, nothing surprises me anymore. Uh, Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun, and he's right. All we have to do is look back through history, and we can see what's in our future. And it's not really always uh, glorious. Let's just put it that way. Genesis chapter 11 tells us about a person that was so evil he led everyone or just about everyone on earth to believe that we could get into heaven our own way, right? Nimrod, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of legends about Nimrod, right? Um, (laughs) One legend is that he possessed the skins from Adam and Eve that God, you know, when, God, the creator, gave Adam and Eve the skins to to wear. Well, one of the legends is that Nimrod had possession of them. Uh, Another legend is that Noah's son Shem killed Nimrod after the fall of uh, the tower. Uh, Basically, he dismembered his body and buried the different body parts in hidden locations throughout the land of Shinar and other places. Uh, so that no one could dig him up and make an idol out of him. <clears throat> That's a pretty grim legend, really. But, you know, legends seem to be attached to famous people for various reasons, right? Some good, some not so good. Either way, we know Nimrod was evil. And I've devoted a couple of episodes to his evilness. Uh, if you search for those in the archives, you can listen to them. Before that, Genesis 6 tells us that uh, just before the flood, mankind was wicked, and everyone had it in their hearts to do evil all the time. Now, I've said before that that might not mean that everyone was raping and pillaging, right? It could very well mean that uh, people wanted to worship things other than the Creator. They may have satisfied themselves worshiping other men, worshiping idols, much like we do today. Um, How many people 
will gather in a stadium to cheer on their favorite sports figure. Hmm? How many will gather to promote a political figure? How many will join together to promote some cause or send money to promote some man-made agenda? See, all of these diversions take our focus away from the Creator. All of these diversions, they're no different. You know, nothing new under the sun, right? It's what was happening before the flood and right after the flood on the plains of Shinar. Nimrod had convinced the majority to build a tower to invade heaven, right? That, that's basically the way it reads. They, w- they were convinced that they could enter heaven by their own means. And, and we do it today in different forms, different ways. There's a lot of denominations out there that teach, you know, if you don't follow our doctrine, you can't go to heaven. Nothing new under the sun. No difference. However, there is a very, very sinister movement that's been going on for decades. A movement that I think we could speculate just a little bit that Gabriel tells Daniel about. And Daniel had this to say. I, Daniel, was exhausted and lay ill for days. Then I got up and went about the king's business. I was confounded by the vision. It was beyond understanding. Okay? Interesting, isn't it? It was beyond Daniel's understanding. Daniel was seeing events that would unfold far into his future. Past his lifetime. He didn't exactly know what they meant, only that there would be some very, very terrible things that would happen. And the people in charge of political nations would be very, very bad people. Later, Paul would write to the Thessalonians that a man so evil, so completely hopeless, would rule the people and convince them that he was God. 2 Thessalonians uh, 2 3 and 4. Let no one deceive you in any way, for it will not come until the rebellion occurs. The man of lawlessness, the son of destruction, is revealed. He will oppose and exalt himself above every so called God or object of worship, so he will seat himself in the temple of God, proclaiming to be God. And again, Daniel was told about that. Uh, Daniel 7 25. He will speak out against the Most High and oppress the saints in the Most High or I'm sorry, the saints of the Most High, intending to change the appointed times and laws. And this, let me repeat that part, intending to change the appointed times and laws. And the saints will be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. Okay, how about again in 825? Through his craft and by his hand, he will cause a seat to prosper. And in his own mind, he will make himself great. In time of peace, he will destroy many. And he will even stand against the prince of princes. But he will be broken off, but not by human hands. Now, a lot of people want to use the term Antichrist to describe this person. But the one being described is far more evil much like Nimrod was. Uh, there's there's a lot of speculation about who that person might be. Uh, recently, some folks even considered Barack Hussein Obama you know, to fit that description, but the reality is he's just not smart enough to be that person. Some think people like George Soros could be that person. And Soros, even with all his wealth, isn't smart enough. Um uh, Maybe too smart. Bill Gates is another one. You know, oh, look at all that money he's got. He's doing all the evil he's doing. Well, there's been people like that before. John Rockefeller uh, didn't make his fortune uh, drilling for oil. He made, actually made his fortune transporting oil. 
But what most people don't know about Rockefeller is that he promoted synthetic pharmaceuticals, and he actually worked to get people away from natural plant medicines. He helped to usher in this uh, age of modern medicine that doesn't, I'm going to get flack for this, I know. It doesn't actually heal people. Um, It makes them dependent on the drugs. It relieves their symptoms, but it actually doesn't cure the cause of the symptoms. And it directly conflicts with every lesson in the Bible about food and medicine. What do we read about today? (laughs) I don't know how many of you have read this. Do you realize that they are uh, breeding pigs to remove a gene that allows male pigs to reproduce, and then they're feeding it to you? From Washington State. Uh, Earlier this month, Washington State University received the first ever approval from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for gene-edited pigs for human consumption. The consumption will be delivered in the form of German-style sausage, which will be used in on-campus catering services that raise funds for the Washington State University meat judging team. The pigs were processed at the Washington State University Meat Lab. Washington State University is a land-grant university, and much of the research on campus is focused on agriculture and natural science. And during the processing of the meat, the U.S. Department of Agriculture inspected the meat. By the way, this is from an article uh, by Michael Wolf, and he goes on. Uh, the approval marks the first time the U.S. FDA has approved a gene-edited pig for entry into the food supply chain. The approval is a cumulation of two years of two years of research by John Oatley, a professor at Washington State University School of Molecular Biosciences in Washington State University's College for Veterinary Medicine. Oatley used CRISPR gene editing technology to improve genetic traits in the livestock. As readers of uh, The Spoon know, which is where this was first published, uh, CRISPR accelerates the process through which changes to an organism's DNA can occur as compared to other methods such as through selective breeding, and unlike transgenics, or what is so often called genetically modified uh, organisms or genetic modification, CRISPR doesn't introduce genetic materials from other organisms. Oatley and his team gene-edited the pigs to enable them to sire offspring with traits from another male pig. The technique called surrogate sires allows the male animals to produce sperm carrying the genetic traits of donor animals. The surrogate sires are first edited to be sterile. Let me read that again. The surrogate sires are first edited to be sterile by knocking out their specific gene related to male fertility. From there, the animals are implanted with another male pig's stem cells to create sperm with the desired traits of the donor male. Now, I'm going to stop reading what he has in this article here. It goes on. This is negative eugenics. You know, I I talked about eugenics a few weeks ago, right? Hopefully you heard that. This is negative eugenics in its worst form. Have they done their due diligence testing this stuff to know that it might be safe to eat? Of course they didn't. It was two years of research. You know, what kind of testing can you do in two years? Oh, we ate it and we're fine. Big deal, right? I got to go here. I got to go here. I can't help myself. I got to go here. Our creator has already done the due diligent research on eating pig meat. Let me say that again. Our creator has already done the due diligent research on eating pigs. 
Pigs are unclean animals and we just shouldn't eat them, according to the Creator. They're literally the garbage trucks of the land. Uh, you know, I did it. I did that uh, episode, it's been a few weeks ago now on eugenics. Um, but this article only came out a few days ago. Isn't that amazing? There's no coincidences in God's timing. Um, <clears throat> the vision that Daniel didn't understand may, could have, possibly, I don't know for sure, but it, it could have had something to do with this. But we know that it, it probably had something to do with people so evil that Daniel just couldn't understand somebody so evil they would tamper with food and with medicine. It, it just didn't process in his mind. Think about that. You know, what, twenty four, five hundred years ago, here's a man who is devout, and he's shown something, and it, and it just doesn't make sense to him. Because there are people who are messing with food. There are people who are harming people through medicine. That's what, you know, imagine Daniel being so confused. Like, why would somebody do that? Why would somebody do that? You know, as believers, we need to be watchful for these things. Believers, and I'm going here. I don't believe I'm going here, but I'm going here. Believers have really no need to eat the things our Creator has already told us is bad for us. And I know a lot of you are going to argue. I, I know just as soon as I said that, I'm going to get emails. I'm going to get messages. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I, I, I can't. I, I'm going to be straightforward with you about this. Christians, there is absolutely no way Jesus made all food clean. If he would have said that, he would have been rejected, probably killed by his own disciples for being a false prophet and blasphemer. And if you're still reading one of those Bibles that has the words, thus he made all foods clean, why are you listening to me? Be realistic. You know, you... you when, when I tell you these things that these people are recorded as saying, it's for a reason. Jesus never assumed the authority to change anything the Father had spoken. Because, you know, that would have made him a false prophet. And it also meant that he would be blaspheming the spirit of the Father. Get over yourselves. I don't care how much you like bacon. You know, do you still <laughs> you still want to send me those messages that Jesus changed the law? Or my favorite. But Paul said you already know when I answer you, it's gonna be with what was written, and it's gonna have examples of the people who did what was written. What I want you to get out of this is that there is a movement among the evil people of the world. Um, they want to help the enemy destroy mankind. That's as plain and simple and blunt as I can put it. There are people out there who hate themselves so much they're willing to help the enemy destroy mankind. It's that simple. And you can either participate, you can help them, or you can choose to live the way the Creator designed you to live. You can reject their perverted food. Daniel did. You can reject 
their perverted medicine. A lot of people do. Do you really think that, I think it's uh, every fourth advertisement you are exposed to is about either food or drugs. Do you think that happens by accident? Of course it's not by accident. It's carefully designed to bombard you with propaganda, hoping that you're going to fall for something. And, and it's it's given the name illusory, or I'm sorry, um, how do you pronounce that? It's an illusion truth effect, illusory. Illusory tr- truth effect. I L L U S O R Y. You see, that's what happens. That's what they call it. When you repeat an, a lie often enough, it becomes truth. Um, Nimrod did it. We, yeah, we can build a tower to get to heaven. We can invade heaven. We can get there on our own. More recently, who did it? Uh, Goebbels, possibly in Germany, right? Oh, those Jews, they're the ones that it's all their fault. Oh, well, it's not just them. You know, it's anybody who doesn't look like us. It's anybody who doesn't think like us. Wait a minute. Just a couple of years ago, wasn't it Bill Gates and Dr. Fauci? It's anybody who doesn't think like us. Uh Uh-oh, I went there. I went there. You see, in, in our modern world, what they want you to believe is that, oh, if you don't feel well, you need to take this certain drug. Then, of course, you know, that drug probably has some side effects. And, oh, you need this one to counteract the side effects of that one. But we, we're we not going to cure the reason that you're taking the first drug to start with because we need you to keep buying it so we can stay in business. You know, they convince you you can't live without them. And what's worse is even though you're healthy, they're attempting to convince you to go to your doctor and ask him if I need this drug. just about every commercial you are exposed to for drugs, you know, ask your doctor if this is right for you. Ask your doctor if this is right for you. Now, there are drugs that you may very well need to take, but you need to do your research because you are responsible for your own health. Do you realize your doctor is nothing more than a contractor you hire to work on your body? Now, you need to make sure that he's working for you and not the insurance company and not the pharmaceutical company. Think about that. The food that we eat, the food that fuels our body, the food that gives us the energy has the ability to either keep us healthy or make us sick. And now we know that the enemy is developing genetically modified food that will make us sick so that we become even more dependent on the same drugs or on the drugs that the same companies are making. You see, there's a problem, though. The problem for companies like Monsanto is people who choose to live the way the Creator designed us to live. Many of us, choose the food that keeps us healthy. Many of us use plant-based or herbal-based remedies to help us heal. You know, when we do get hurt, when we do get sick from time to time. And as I've said, they've been working at this for decades. This isn't a sprint. This is a marathon. Do your research. Do you, when I started looking at some things, I was amazed at some of the things I found. Look up a man named Frederick McKay. 
You know, he's actually credited uh, with adding fluoride to the water that you drink. And, and if you dare, look up what fluoride is, where it comes from, and what it used to be. Now, you might want to, you know, <laughs> have a strong stomach when you do, okay? Now, I'm, I'm going to say that McKay probably thought he was doing everybody a favor when it came to adding fluoride to water. Um, but what are the side effects of adding a toxic substance to water? Those side effects may not be as beneficial as you might want to believe. And, and history history's filled with stories like this. Filled with it. Now, I don't know, um, I don't claim to know who the next Nimrod will be. And I really don't care who it is. But I, I know we need to be vigilant, vigilant, vigilant. I know we need to be vigilant to see who is really helping or harming mankind. And, and the best way to do that best way to be vigilant is to live the way we've been designed to live. To eat real food, good food, healthy food, not what the enemy's legions will tell us is healthy for us. Not what the enemy's armies will say, you've got to take this. Oh, you don't feel good? Here. Here. Take this. You you think drug pushers only stand on street corners? Sell cracked kids? The biggest drug pushers I know advertise on television under the authority of the Food and Drug Administration in the United States. Don't be deceived. Don't fall for the... Um, illusionary, illusory, however you want to say it, the, the illusory truth effect. Don't fall for it. Do your research. Not only, you know, don't limit your research. Look at it all. I don't have time to look at it all. Do you have time to be healthy? Do you have time to be sick? Do your research. And after you do your research, go back to your Bible, compare the research to the, the standard that should be your Bible, and say, does it, does it own up to this? Does it hold up to what I'm seeing? And then hopefully you will choose to do what is written in the Bible. Until Thursday, when hopefully Myra will be back with us. She can keep me calm, cool, and collected. <clears throat> Many 